Good morning. Thank you for joining us here at Hudson Institute, as well as those who are joining us virtually uh, and streaming online. My name is Rebecca Heinrichs. I am a senior fellow here at Hudson Institute. Uh, I, I do a lot of commentary and research on a range of national security issues, but I do focus on missile defense, nuclear uh, nonproliferation, and uh, deterrence. And it is my great privilege to um, have with us today the ambassador, um, US, the uh, Romanian ambassador to the United States, uh, George Christian Mayor. Um, and I, what, I, what I'd like to do this morning is I'm going to um, give a little bit of an introduction. I'm not going to go over his entire bio because it's quite impressive and lengthy, but it is uh, my intention to, to give a brief introduction and then let the ambassador uh, speak, deliver some remarks, and then he and I will go on to have a conversation about the content of his remarks, and then I will turn it over to some questions from the audience, and we will have everybody on their way at 11.30. Uh, ambassador Mayor was accredited as Ambassador Extraordinary and Plenipotentiary of Romania to the United States in June 2015 and officially commenced his mandate in September 2015. Previously, he was a diplomat in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs within the Department of Treaties and Department of Strategic Affairs from 1992 to 1997. Charge A, you're going to challenge my Midwestern abilities here. Um, Charge A, Affairs at the Romanian Embassy in Ireland from 1997 to 1999, and was conferred the rank of ambassador in 2004. From 2000 to 2004, he held the position of State Secretary and Head of the Department for Euro-Atlantic Integration and Defense Policy within the Ministry of National Defense. In 2006, he was appointed Director of the Romanian Intelligence Service overseeing an extensive reform process that allowed the SRI to strengthen bilateral and multilateral partnerships and gain a high level of public confidence. Um, and what I'd like the ambassador, I've asked the ambassador to speak about today is the importance of the U.S.-Romanian alliance, and uh, specifically not only um, the strategic alliance, but then uh, just the defense cooperation that we have with Romania, and then most specifically the missile defense uh, uh, cooperation that the United States has with Romania as um, we do continue to have uh, shared threats and, um, and, and that relationship, regardless of U.S. administrations, that commitment to the alliance and our missile defense cooperation does in fact remain um, as both administrations, the, 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 the current one, the previous one, and the one before that continue to call the alliance uh, between the United States and our NATO allies, um, and specifically on missile defense, ironclad. And without further ado, Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Heinrichs, for those remarks and your kind introduction. And first of all, I would like to uh, express my gratitude to your institute, uh, Hudson Institute, for its uh, exceptional leadership on uh, relevant uh, matters of uh, international security, for providing an engagement framework for debate and for generating so many ideas that become policy on a wide range of issues. And I would like to acknowledge also uh, the leadership, of course, of Mr. Weinstein uh, in this respect and uh, wish you success uh, in those very interesting times for international security in generating such debates. Um, among other initiatives, uh, let me highlight the Hudson Institute project dedicated to the security developments in the Black Sea region, uh, which I will touch upon a bit in my remarks, and uh, the need to keep the focus on this important, we believe, component of the Euro-Atlantic uh, security. Uh, furthermore, I'm much honored to refer, you mentioned that, to, in this setting to the 20th anniversary, in fact, of the strategic partnership between the uh, United States and Romania. We celebrated that this year, a partnership founded on shared values of freedom and democracy and uh, a strong, a really strong cooperation 
in security and defense. Well, in my remarks today, I would like to refer first to a more general subject, the overall threats to our security that we all share and uh, how we are working with uh, the US to try to address them. Uh, second, of course, allow me to point to what you already mentioned, the missile defense threat and how the US-Romania missile defense cooperation developed in the last years. And third, I will uh, try to underscore how this cooperation is meaningful to NATO development of uh, missile defense uh, capability. I would like in this context also to acknowledge the presence uh, here of uh, former ambassador, uh, Romanian ambassador to US, Mr. Sorin Dutaru, assistant uh, secretary general uh, in NATO on emerging threats. It's a pleasure to see him here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the security environment today, we believe, is marked by unpredictability. Over the past decade, we have witnessed uh, overall, unfortunately, negative developments in international affairs from this point of view. On one hand, we see the rising impact of terrorism, uh, especially from non-state actors like uh, ISIS or other uh, terror networks. Uh, such networks, although countered, continue to seek new ways and places to develop uh, and, and to employ capabilities that hold entire regions at risk. And this combined, of course, with cyber capabilities or ballistic missile uh, capabilities, uh, such actors can pose uh, real threats way beyond their actual geographical location. On the other hand, uh, Europe and the United States have been confronted with a different threat, a resurgent Russia. We've seen uh, Russia's uh, assertive and aggressive conduct manifesting itself in the region and in many aspects of our societies. Of course, the 2014 annexation of Crimea uh, was one more one of the most blatant example in this respect, uh, a form under the disguise of uh, high hybrid warfare uh, tactics. Uh, but we can go uh, in the past and mention Georgia 2008, uh, Eastern Ukraine, of course, uh, the influence uh, of propaganda taxi, uh, tactics, the use of cyber attacks uh, in an attempt to interfere in some election processes. Also, uh, what we see now, the military buildup in Crimea, speaking of the Black Sea, which is, by the way, only 150 miles from Romania's shores and then, uh, of course, from NATO shores. Uh, the deployment of anti-access and area denial systems and other military assets in the Black Sea uh, reflect uh, an approach based uh, on uh, uh, geopolitical competition, and uh, this approach manifests itself, I must say, across the whole eastern flank of NATO, from the Black Sea uh, to the Baltic Sea. <coughs> Such developments in the east uh, of uh, eastern part of NATO confirm the strategic importance of the Black Sea and the Baltic Sea regions for the whole Euro-Atlantic area and reflect the need to consolidate NATO's deterrence and uh, defense uh, posture, of course. In this regard, the United States' commitment to European security is uh, very, very important. Earlier this year, uh, when President of Romania, Klaus Johannes, met uh, President uh, Donald Trump, uh, we have all witnessed the U.S. President confirming the U.S. commitment to collective defense and the protection of Europe, in fact, reconfirming that commitment. A similar strong message was presented uh, last week by Secretary Tillerson at the NATO ministerial meeting. These firm political statements on deterrence and defense are backed, of course, by U.S. contribution to European security the presence of U.S. forces and the European deterrence initiative that we welcome. 
In this vein, I strongly believe that the transatlantic partnership remains the cornerstone of uh, Euro-Atlantic security. This pillar is strengthened by deterrence and defense, but also through burden sharing among allies, in our opinion. And let me assure you that Romania takes this commitment seriously. We believe that, first of all, defense starts at home. Uh, for Romania, this includes reaching 2% uh, of the GDP, and I would like to uh, emphasize that this decision to allocate 2% of the GDP for defense was taken three years ago. Uh, it was a, a cross-party agreement uh, to, to reach uh, this uh, level of spending, and uh, it was based on a, a very serious and systematic assessment of the threat environment in the region that I've mentioned. And this is the first year when the 2% uh, became operational in terms of uh, the allocation uh, for defense. Uh, I would like to mention also that uh, last week on uh, November 29, Romania signed an agreement with the U.S. government to purchase the Patriot Integrated Air and Missile Defense System. This system is completely interoperable with NATO, of course, NATO capabilities, and will provide, we believe, a significant uh, defense uh, capability against air and missile threats. Um, complementary effort to the U.S. Aegis Ashore Missile Defense System hosted uh, now by, <clears throat> by Romania. Uh, also, Romania has recently completed acquisition and deployment of 12 U.S. F-16 fighter jets with uh, clear prospects to purchase further more multi-role aircraft in the very near future. Other significant efforts are underway for a major modernization and procurement process, including investments in armored transporters, uh, helicopters, multi-role corvettes, as well as the HIMARS, HIMARS system, high mobility artillery for those uh, <coughs> that uh, know the term. Um, let me turn now to my second point. Today, we continue to face major ballistic missile threats, widely acknowledged, of course. Uh, the attention this year was particularly focused, and still is focused, of course, on North Korea, with heated uh, rhetoric and threats, with significant testing of vectors with increased ranges that hold both United States and Europe at risk. Such actions breach UN Security Council resolutions and represent, of course, a grave threat to regional and international peace and security. On the other hand, also against uh, UN Security Council resolutions, Iran has continued to develop a ballistic missile program and to aim for the increase of range and sophistication of its ballistic arsenal. Furthermore, uh, there is a growing interest from non-state actors to acquire and use advanced missile technology, which poses uh, also uh, risks to our populations, forces, and uh, territories. Uh, once unpredictable actors acquire, of course, possess or further develop this technology, it is easier to attempt to project force to make threats and to look for political gains and advantages using this capability. This uh, demonstrates uh, that the threat posed by the proliferation of ballistic missiles is real. It is not just a regional threat, but a global one that affects each and every one of us, and we need more missile defense, not less, in our opinion. Uh, within this context, as a member of NATO and sharing a strategic partnership with the United States, Romania's decision to host the first ages ashore of the U.S.-European phase adaptive approach came as a natural contribution to the development of the NATO ballistic missile defense capability. 
Romania's participation in the missile defense has enjoyed strong political and public uh, support. The ballistic missile defense agreement between US and Romania negotiated between 2010 and 2011 was signed and ratified almost unanimously by the Romanian parliament in 2011. The construction works at the Aegis Ashore broke ground in October 2013, and they were completed by the end of 2015. The joint statement of uh, 18th of December 2015, which marked an important milestone in the development of the site, the joint statement US-Romania reads, uh, and I quote, reaching today's achievement is indicative of the close cooperation between the United States and Romania share commitment uh, to regional, regional stability and security. The Edges Ashore site was inaugurated on May 12, 2016, and transferred to NATO at the Alliance Warsaw Summit, the summit uh, of last year. I believe that such uh, example of missile defense cooperation as the one between US and Romania is very relevant today for any region, regional missile defense uh, architecture. Also having this missile defense asset adequately protected, will, uh, protection will reinforce the allied capability on all accounts. This leads me to my final, my third point and the final point, the importance of our missile defense cooperation for NATO as a whole. Last year, the Aegis Ashore was made operational and transferred, as I mentioned, to NATO. The Warsaw Summit uh, declared, uh, which declared NATO BND initial operational capability in that, the context of that summit. This is a practical result and a contribution to the overall Allied defense and deterrence. An important milestone will be reached also next year as a second U.S. Aegis Ashore in Poland is planned to become operational. Other allies make also, of course, important contributions. Germany hosts the Allied Command Center. Turkey hosts the U.S. Early Warning Radar. Spain hosts four Aegis uh, ships in Rota. Denmark and the Netherlands upgrade ships with radar capabilities. UK, of course, contributes with ground-based radars. <coughs> As you can see, NATO ballistic missile defense is about burden sharing and about teamwork, and it's an effective response to the threat environment. As allies, we attach great importance to the development of the NATO BMD capability towards achieving full operational capability. This capability combined with nuclear and conventional capabilities has become part of NATO's overall strategy for credible deterrence and defense. Therefore, uh, NATO BMD is a long-term investment against a long-term threat. It proves that NATO is adaptable to actual threats, demonstrates commitment of allies to share the burden for this important capability, and specifically reduces the risk to allies posed by ballistic missiles, both through deterrence and the protection it provides. The NATO missile defense capability as well the Aegis Ashore missile defense facility has been an entirely defensive endeavor, I must underline, developed in the spirit of cooperation and transparency. They do not, and I emphasize this, aim to undermine or weaken Russia's strategic nuclear deterrent the small number of interceptors, the location of the sites in Romania, as well as in Poland, makes it technically impossible to intercept Russian intercontinental ballistic missiles. The ballistic missile defense agreement, in fact, between US and Romania explicitly mentions that the system shall be used in full compliance with the UN Charter for legitimate self-defense and shall not possess offensive capabilities. The agreement also provides that the interceptors deployed in Romania are non-nuclear. They destroy a ballistic missile through the kinetic force of their impact and carry no explosive charge. 
These aspects have been made clear to Russia many times, and Russia was invited to cooperate on missile defense in the past, if you recall. <clears throat> Let us remember that Russia unilaterally terminated cooperation with NATO on missile defense in 2013. Uh, at the end, uh, of course, the United States is in the process of updating its ballistic missile defense policy. Uh, we reflect how important uh, missile defense cooperation is to address threats to our peace and security. In conclusion, the missile defense cooperation between US and Romania is uh, indicative for a number of reasons. It highlights the strategic importance of a project that fits into a larger regional context and is valued to US, Romania, and the whole NATO. It contributes and demonstrates the US and allies' capacity to adapt to new and sophisticated challenges. It underscores the relevance of the burden sharing, solidarity, and indivisibility of security within NATO and the solidity of the regional missile defense architecture. And of course, it consolidates the transatlantic link and overall collective defense of NATO. Thank you for your attention. I'm looking forward to a discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, what I'd like to do uh, is, starting off, talk a little bit more about some of these shared threats, the, the, uh, the European Phase Adaptive Approach, the EPAA, that the Obama administration initiated um, uh, is, is similar in, in, in some ways, many ways, to the previous administration, the Bush administration's. It's, it's different systems, but, but the goals in, in many ways are the same. And that is to protect Europe, offer ballistic missile defense protection of Europe from, from missiles emanating from the Middle East in particular. That's what the, site, that's what the sites are designed for. And, and we've done this in phases, and it has been on time, and we intend to keep, keep that on time and on schedule with the delivery of the subsequent systems. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about your country's understanding of that missile threat coming from the Middle East? Um, because we will often hear in the United States that, that uh, many of our European allies do not share the same concern um, from, from the missile threat coming. Yes, well, uh, of course, uh, we uh, assess uh, the, uh, the threats uh, from this uh, perspective uh, ourselves, but also together with allies. Uh, it is clear that uh, I think uh, in NATO we share the threat ass assessment with respect uh, to the ballistic missile program that uh, Iran continues uh, to undertake. And uh, that was uh, a common assessment that was, I think, shared with some nuances by all allies. So I, we believe that uh, uh, we are uh, in, a, in a unity mode in terms of uh, understanding the threat uh, emanating uh, from the Middle East from this point of view uh, in NATO. And, and to be clear, because uh, regardless of any particular country's position on the JCPOA with Iran, that of course did not include restraints on its missile. No, it didn't, so exactly, it's, yes. And yes. It's, even if we take care of the one uh, component, um, the, the nuclear program specifically, you still have a massive ballistic missile force that, that is continuing to, to, yeah. to grow and to be, um, to be improved upon. Absolutely correct, and moreover, uh, of course, uh, we spoke about non-state actors. This is a, an issue that uh, preoccupies allies and countries uh, in NATO, and uh, also from this perspective, uh, we should uh, be uh, very careful in terms of covering uh, uh, spaces and territory in NATO that was not covered previously uh, from this point of view, 
to counter a, a ballistic missile threat. So uh, it fills a gap in a way in that region uh, in NATO, and the gap will be further filled with uh, the future development in Poland that I've mentioned. And because of those uh, shared intelligence assessments and recognition that the threat is real and exists and it, there's no sign that it's going to decrease over time, it will increase as other countries develop ballistic missile capabilities, et cetera, um, there is a, a need for ballistic missile defense of Europe. And um, because of that particular threat. Now, you, you mentioned um, very um, uh, eloquently the, the threats, though, that Russia has um, made against um, in general. But specifically, they have, they have opposed the missile defense site. Um, they've opposed the missile defense site. And uh, can you talk a little bit, though, about why? You mentioned that it isn't about Russia, that it is about, it is about the, the Middle East and threats emanating from that direction. But it has been my view that, um, that if, if the United States and our NATO allies uh, acquiesce and, and sort of you know, back off some of these missile defense programs because of um, opposition from Russia, that, that is going to make, that's going to weaken the protection, of course, uh, of, the, of Europe from the threats from, from the Middle East. And so it, it is not a, um, it's not a fair attack from Russia uh, verbal threats, et cetera, because we need this site because of these, these common threats. I, I, I agree with, uh, first of all, your evaluation and your commentaries. Uh, I mentioned in my uh, brief remarks that even in the agreement as such, we have specified uh, that uh, this is uh, for uh, Self-defense is not an offensive uh, capability. It's uh, in line with the UN Charter, with the INF uh, Treaty. Um, we uh, believe that uh, it's, a, it's a bad rhetoric to, to uh, uh, go on this path since you don't have the technical capabilities. Uh, to uh, be offensive uh, with the system, and since uh, you made those all those reassurances uh, in the treaty, and also NATO uh, tried to convey this message that uh, it's uh, for the protection of our territory, filling a gap uh, that uh, is needed for protection uh, from uh, ballistic missile threat from uh, the Middle East. So this is where we stand from time to time. We hear uh, this uh, rhetoric, uh, and uh, it's not based on uh, uh, reality. reality, yes. And, and just to, to highlight a point that you just made, um, you know, the Russian continued to, to accuse that Aegis Ashore site of violating the INF Treaty, uh, which it in fact does not. Technically, it does not, and that, that is a... Um, that is a broad consensus. Nobody really believes that it does. That's simply something that, that the Russians have accused. Um, um, I, would, I would go a step further, though, too. You, you made remarks in your comments that, that missile defense, though, is only going to continue to expand. So it's not like once we have the EPAA complete that we're going to call it a day and be, be satisfied with that, because as the threats, the offensive threats continue to grow, then um, it's incumbent upon uh, the alliances to to make sure that we're staying ahead of the threat. We don't want to be constantly trailing the threat. We want to stay ahead of it. So we're going to um, expand missile defense. Missile defense is here to stay in Europe. It's here to stay in, in Asia, where the United States has uh, great alliances and missile defense cooperation with our Asian allies as well. And, and simply because of the missile era that we've entered, we're going, it's going to have to be met with the missile defense era as well. Um, so, um, uh, you know, there's going to be, you mentioned new missile defense cooperation, even beyond the, the initial Aegis Ashore site, that there will be other programs as well, and that's going to continue to develop. And um, if you'd like any, to add anything more, more on that point. Yeah, well, of course, uh, now the debate is uh, very uh, intense. It's about the North Korean uh, ballistic missile threat. And this only justifies the need for uh, First of all, reassessing uh, always the threat environment, be ahead 
uh, of the threat and uh, further develop uh, such t systems uh, regionally because uh, as things progress uh, even in Europe uh, uh, in terms of uh, its impact uh, the North Korean threat uh, should uh, be occupy uh, more uh, allies and NATO in terms of our uh, capabilities. And um, just for our own um, edification, it would be good for if you could talk to us a little bit about um, the political support or challenges or questions within your own country for U.S. missile defense deployments, mm -hmm. uh, because it certainly uh, depends on the country, and, and there's yeah. different um, um, different responses as the United States looks to increase missile defense cooperation from different countries. Well, uh, that's a very interesting question. There were. Uh, debates in various countries, assertions that the depo deployment of uh, uh, missile defense uh, on the territory of uh, an ally will only uh, increase uh, a certain uh, vulnerability for that country in terms of the attention uh, it reflects uh, internationally or from uh, uh, state or non-state actors in terms of uh, the evolution of its uh, defense policy it was uh, not the case uh, in terms of uh, the public perception uh, in Romania. We have tested uh, this uh, particular element uh, of our cooperation with U.S. in several polls conducted that there is uh, indication of strong support uh, of the population, first of all, uh, towards the uh, operationalization of this project, and secondly, uh, overall, U.S.-Romanian uh, strategic and defense cooperation is supported uh, by the majority of the population because they understand the nature of the threats, and not only the ballistic threat, but also I mentioned the region, uh, the negative developments in the last uh, decade, uh, and the fact that uh, you see geography, it's becoming more and more complex, uh, compressed even in the Black Sea. So for the first time with uh, Crimea, we have, uh, I will say, a sort of a maritime border now uh, with with Russia, which uh, really changes uh, a bit uh, the strategic uh, situation, a bit more the strategic situation in the Black Sea, which is so important. Mm. I think that that raises uh, an important point that not only um, is this alliance merely a, a defense alliance or a strategic alliance, but it's a political alliance. And Absolutely, so the, yes. The, the willingness of Romania to step up and, will, and, and its willingness to host these sites um, demonstrates a certain degree of, of a political commitment to, to the United States and our mission there into the NATO alliance. And, yes. and I mentioned also the uh, increased uh, allocation for defense, uh, 2%. Uh, this figure, 2%, uh, was discussed years ago uh, in Romania, even before it became uh, so relevant in terms of uh, discussion in NATO or even, of course, here in U.S. And this is also on the basis of our own evaluation uh, of uh, the security environment and our own belief that, as I've mentioned, uh, always defense starts uh, home. And uh, we want uh, to pursue a very ambitious program of modernization uh, of our military, I've mentioned that in, in my remarks, uh, it's uh, a 10-year program that we have in mind, uh, which covers uh, lots of areas, air defense, uh, of course, uh, I've mentioned, but also uh, maritime capabilities, uh, other capabilities. And I think this also uh, is important uh, for the collective defense of uh, NATO and uh, for the what we're trying to do now to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, reassure uh, through a posture of serious deterrence the eastern flank of NATO, which is so much, we believe, not only we, in Romania, but also other allies like Poland, the Baltic states, of course, very 
exposed to an unpredictable security environment right now. Um, and and once again, you know, because you know, the, my my view of the administrations of the the U.S. administration's emphasis of of our allies reaching that two percent is not merely be, because of the, the the money contribution, which is important, but it is indicative of the overall commitment. But and as you mentioned, there are other ways to demonstrate a commitment and for burden sharing as well, and certainly a willingness to host um, the Aegis the Shore site is, is, is surely a demonstration of will and commitment and, and um, political commitment. And I wanted to mention also that the fact that uh, from this allocation, uh, 2% uh, to, to defense, 40% uh, is, is going in uh, acquisitions and modernization programs. That, I think that's very relevant for uh, our intention. Yeah. Um, and then one more specifically on the missile defense uh, program. Um, can you provide a little bit of insight in terms of the overall uh, confidence that your country has in, in the reliability of the systems that are going to be deployed? And uh, because, um, you know, there is this in the United States when we argue amongst ourselves about some of these systems, there are those who say that the systems aren't as reliable as we would want them to be, to which I say that's very interesting because our allies certainly want them and, and, are, and are buying them or are hosting them or are investing in them as well. Um, yeah, well, uh, <coughs> of course, uh, technology always uh, evolves. It's all, it only evolves, and we uh, are trying to uh, make our own assessments of uh, what we are uh, embarking upon. Uh, we have uh, serious discussions uh, on, on those aspects, and of course we want uh, the best, and uh, the, uh, the fact that some of those systems were tested uh, successfully uh, only reassures us that we are doing the right thing. Mm. Certainly, and, yeah. and the missile defense systems don't don't ever have to be 100 percent. They're they're there to provide protection, and they're, exactly. they're important for the offense defense mix. Exactly. Um, for, for exactly. Country. Um, and uh, if you could talk a little bit then, and, and then I'm going to turn it over to the floor. So if you all could be prepared to be thinking about questions, um, and uh, and that is this idea of you, you talked a little bit about. Um, Burden sharing in, in general, and your already commitment to that two percent. But 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 Romania has also contributed burden burden sharing in other um, military operations with the United States as well. Um, so there's some history there. If you if you want to talk yeah. a little bit yeah. about that, and then and then I'm going to turn it over to the floor. So you could yeah. Well, uh, I uh, mentioned in my bio uh, for four years I was uh, deputy minister for defense. It was a very complicated period uh, with Afghanistan, uh, of course, and uh, since 2003, I think we've uh, rotated uh, more than 30,000 military in Afghanistan, Romania. Uh, we are the fourth contributor right now with uh, forces uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, again, this is uh, indicative of uh, what we understand in terms of uh, alliances and border sharing. Also, strong presence uh, in, the, in the Balkans at certain points. Uh, also, I will uh, mention the special cooperation that we have, and I think this is of paramount importance in terms of uh, uh, assessing, always assessing this dynamic threat environment, uh, the, cooperation in the field of uh, intelligence services among uh, our uh, agencies and uh, countries. So all those added, I think, uh, really make uh, for a, a strong partnership in, in this respect and burden sharing uh, really understood in substance, not only in rhetoric. Exactly. It's a good reminder that, um, that we do have our allies constantly fighting alongside us in, these long, in the long war against um, uh, with that, if, if there is a question um, or two from the audience, um, 
Thank you very much. My name is Michael Svedia. I'm uh, from the Czech Embassy, Czech Republic's Embassy. Um, I have a kind of uh, controversial question, but I hope uh, you will answer it anyway. Um, actually, bo for both of you. So you rightly said, Mr. Ambassador, that the current missile defense system is not aimed at the Russian missile threat because it's technically impossible to, uh, to do that. But <clears throat> in a more or less distant future, when and if it becomes technically possible and financially affordable, do you think it would be uh, advisable for NATO to develop such a system that would be able to address the Russian strategic forces threat? Thank you. <coughs> That's a, a hypothetical uh, question. Now, clearly, we are focusing on the threats I've mentioned emanating uh, from the Middle East. Uh, we, of course, it's hard to predict uh, evolutions in terms of uh, the strategic uh, developments in um, in uh, in the region and uh, internationally, we'll always be prepared uh, to make assessments of the threat of the medium and the long term and take the necessary decisions in case the threat increases or it may might diminish. Of course, <clears throat> of course, um, my position is not the position of the U.S. government, but the U.S. government is free to adopt it. Um, and, uh, and my answer to that if, is our allies and the United States should defend themselves from threats that they perceive. No country is entitled to threaten free and sovereign nations. And, um, and so, you know, while I appreciate the arguments that the United States <coughs> allies continue to make to sort of prove that the system is not, will not um, demean or, or lessen the, the offensive force that Russia has, if it were up to me, I wish that we would stop trying to convince them of that, mainly because I think that it concedes to some degree the argument that it's entitled to, to have an offensive force that does credibly threaten our allies in the United States of America. Um, so. Right now, we're building defenses against the, uh, the threats that we perceive emanating out of the Middle East. Um, but as technology improves and as the offensive threats continue to grow, the United States and our allies should build defenses to the best of our abilities against any threat that we perceive. Uh, Frederick Peterson. Uh Marine Corps Colonel retired, but now Congressional uh, Defense Advisor. I'm interested in, um, and it, I've been to Romania many times and consider them very, very close friends uh, and very valued allies. They occupy a very critical terrain, and uh, uh, you are certainly are on the front lines. There is an evolving challenge, however, that we're, we're touching around here, and that is the changing nature of, uh, of the threat. We have a new Russian-Iranian uh, alliance, uh, both of which create very uh, serious challenges to the security of uh, NATO, and the stability of uh, the region. And uh, this addresses very directly the uh, strategic concerns that you have laid out um, and the importance of Romania in our alliance and the amount of resources that you're contributing to it. What can the United States do to improve that relationship with Romania and your neighbors uh, you got Serbia, Hungary, all, um, Poland, certainly. What can we do to improve that relationship? And what does Romania see uh, in the near and not too distant future uh, as to how this may, uh, may develop? Thank you. Thank you for uh, your comments and the appreciation 
uh, of uh, our cooperation. I believe that uh, indeed uh, the region uh, degraded in terms of its overall uh, security with uh, those events uh, I've mentioned, Ukraine, Crimea. I didn't speak a lot about the whole range of uh, frozen conflicts that uh, are uh, bordering, in fact, uh, the eastern flank of, of NATO, Transnistria, and Moldova, uh, Pazia, Georgia, uh, was only add to, to the complexity uh, of uh, the security environment. Uh, we were uh, very fast in uh, trying to have a conversation with uh, the new administration on those aspects, and I mentioned briefly in my remarks a visit of our president and the discussions we had with uh, President Trump. We highlighted uh, those uh, uh, concerns that we have in, with respect uh, to the region and trying to find new ways of uh, further develop, developing our cooperation in terms of security and defense. And this visit was followed very soon by a visit of our Minister for Defense that discussed in concrete terms uh, uh, aspects of our uh, cooperation, uh, which will only increase uh, in the coming uh, years in terms of defense uh, and uh, security, including uh, the need, uh, for example, to further develop uh, our cooperation uh, at the Black Sea in terms of uh, uh, the Kogani Channel base, uh, which is used now uh, for the rotation. This is a base at the Black Sea, which is used for the rotation of troops uh, to Afghanistan. I think this is an important element that can be considered. Also, the European uh, Deterrence Initiative is very relevant. Uh, it's it's a U.S. Uh, commitment to the region, uh, and it's uh, going on very well uh, in terms of U.S. presence on the entire eastern uh, flank. I think this should continue and Congress should support uh, for the future uh, this uh, initiative. I believe that the B9 format, so-called B9 uh, countries from Central and Eastern Europe, the Bucharest format, uh, allies from NATO uh, discussing those issues and highlighting, emphasizing uh, the situation, uh, the security si situation on the eastern flank in the spirit of solidarity is very important as an initiative that we have. We also have this uh, uh, new scheme of cooperation. Uh, President Trump attended uh, a meeting in Poland of the the so-called Three Seas Initiative, the Baltic, the Adriatic, and the Black Sea. Uh, next year, Romania uh, is uh, hosting uh, this initiative, and we hope uh, that uh, America will uh, and be uh, involved again uh, in those discussions that have, of course, a strategic dimension, but also an economic dimension, because we didn't speak a lot about this, but energy security, other aspects are also important for the overall stability. So there are many things in motion, and uh, we only hope that uh, cooperation bilaterally and, of course, multilaterally will uh, increase uh, among allies in this respect. Well, um, and I, I would just add that, um, you know, as the United States just continues to pursue these close relationships, um, that, that one of the best things that the United States government can do is to pursue them, um, regardless of the opposition that, that there's going to be from, from other regional actors as, as Russia continues to oppose them. And so, you know, as we just sort of stick with it and stick with the plan, these energy partnerships, missile defense expansion. Um, I, I believe it was a mistake in the past for the United States government to, even though the commitment was always there to protect Europe, um, the previous administration backed off a previous missile defense plan because of the opposition coming from, from, from Russia, um, in part, um, and that was uh, you know, the, the Czech radar and the, and the, uh, the 10 ground-based interceptors in Poland, and then the, the 
the missile defense plan was changed to the current one we have now with Aegis Ashore and Patriot and, and that and other missile defense systems that are going to continue to exist. Um, so, so just from a, you know, just one of the best things we can do is to stick with these partnerships and plans. And when we say we're going to do them, follow through on those commitments and make sure they're on time and on schedule, um, regardless of opposition, because there will be opposition. That's inevitable, I think. And I think we have time for one last question before we close out. And if there isn't any more, and please join me in thanking the ambassador for his time and for his remarks.